Welcome to Big Brother Basics, where we break down the basics of Big Brother Basics. My name is Jacob Harple, and joining me is the rest of production for BB Basics, Keith Guerrero. How are you doing, Keith? Very good. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Aaron Nunley. Aaron, how's it going? Fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. And the always beautiful Joe Gonzalez. How are you doing today? Well, I'm just beautiful. <laughs> and uh, thanks for coming to my apartment. You're welcome. Thanks for having us again and always. <laughs> well, it's week two in the BB Basic House, and a lot of interesting stuff has happened. So, Keith, what do you think was the reaction of the overall house when they found out that Chris and Nick were a pair? Because I definitely think that's the storyline for week two. I agree. They were like... <laughs> <laughs> People alive <laughs> know each other. It's crazy. It's crazy talk. And what was also crazy was Nick and Chris thinking they could fool everybody by leaving all their social media posts <laughs> online and available for the public to see. Mm -hmm. Joe, do you think that if Nick and Chris didn't win HOH, it was almost a 100% chance that they would find themselves on the block? Yes. <laughs> um, I think that when things like that come to light, especially when they're not being very forthcoming, and even after the fact, they, they weren't very quick to embrace what mm -hmm. information was being given to the house. Mm -hmm. um, you kind of are, have to expect to hit the block at that point. Definitely. Uh, and we learned from Tom that he almost kind of wanted to use Nick and Chris in a similar fashion that uh, Vanessa did with Liz and Julia back in Big Brother 17, almost time to kind of protect them. Do you think that's a valid strategy? Uh, did you kind of see where he was going with that? Yeah, definitely. Um, more so in Tom's situation than Vanessa's. Um, but, um, no, if everybody is against those, those two people, you can't get rid of them both in one week. So, um, at least staying on their side and being in their good graces, had they won the next HOH, like, you're safe in their eyes. So it's definitely smart to to at least a couple of people in the house to be on their side so you can be in their good graces mm -hmm. for a power shift or whatever. Do you agree with that, Keith? Do you think there's any value in kind of sticking your neck out for a pair like Nick and Chris? No. Well, not sticking your neck out like yeah, week think... two. Like, it's all about timing. Like, if you stick your neck out, you have to make sure that you can survive whatever weeks are remaining. And if you stick your neck out in week two, yeah, there's a lot of, that's a lot of weeks to survive. So I don't think this is a week to stick your neck out for anyone. Well, Matus won the HOH, and to no surprise, he decided to target the known pair in the game. Let's talk about Matus as HOH, because this is someone that I definitely would not have uh, expected to emerge in a power position so early. Joe, what do you think about Matus's game overall so far and him winning the HOH week two? You know, if if I would have seen this as somebody else completely different, I'd expect him to kind of crash and burn. But he's embraced it really well. He took the easy noms. He did what the house was, you know, pressuring him to do. Even though he's got other fish to fry, he knows how to play the game, and he's doing a great job. I want to talk about Nick because as much as I really do like Chris, I feel like out of Nick and Chris, we are have, we have seen a lot more potential from Nick. So, Aaron, what's Nick's move? You're on the block next to someone uh, that you know outside of the game. Everyone knows you know him. What's, what's the strategy that you think um, should be taken in order to get out of the situation? Well, first, you probably shouldn't uh, still associate with that person on the block. You probably shouldn't strategize with them, you probably shouldn't tell them information that the HOH gave you and then have it come back around to your full circle. Um, but really, Nick should be distancing himself from Chris. He should be telling everybody that he's a, a stronger ally to have than Chris. It shouldn't It shouldn't be a, how can Chris and I get to the end or get through this week together? Like, you need to just worry about yourself. So mm -hmm. uh, I think that's what Nick needs to be doing right now. Definitely. And you bring up a good point. I actually forgot to mes mention that. So... Before the nomination ceremony, Matus had almost made a deal with Nick um, where he was not going to nominate Nick, but he could not promise the same thing for Chris. Nick then took that information, told Chris, people talk pretty quickly in the BB Basics house, and it got back to Matus, and that's kind of what put Nick on the block. Keith, do you think that Nick would have gone up anyway? And if not, then what do you, what do you, what do you think about this? I'm putting my Vaseline on my face. I'm about to fight them both. Why Nick telling Chris? And then, even then, why would Chris tell Matus? Yeah. Like, 
Nick telling Chris, okay, I see that. You're trying to look out for your homie. But why would you confront the HOH where the detriment is going to be to your partner, Nick? Exactly. Because there's no way Chris is not getting on the block yeah. at that point. So, like, information is power in the Big Brother house. Like, you don't have to go around and tell everybody that you know something. If you're going to get nominated no matter what, then just own it. Just be nominated. And if you can save Nick by not confronting the HOH about being nominated, then don't do that. But... If you want to sit on the block next to your homie, then do what Chris did. Yeah, it was very disappointing because I feel like that was their ticket to try and get both of them through this week. Exactly. You know, if Nick isn't on the block, he gets drawn for veto and wins the veto, then boom, problem solved. But by confronting the HOH, you're kind of guaranteeing that the only other person that's going to use the veto on you is on the block, then it's kind of you, you've doomed both of you. Um, yeah, so let's get to the veto, um, because I want to talk about Tom. He gets picked, <laughs> and, you know, you and I know about this, Aaron, should too. Like, we we heard Tom say to us multiple times before, the uh, you know, the veto that I don't want to win, I do not want to win, and lo and behold, he wins the veto. So, Aaron, what was your reaction to Tom winning the veto? Do you think it was a bad thing? What, what do you think? I think it was okay. Um... With, with everything the way, the way that everything happened, he didn't really have competition, mm -hmm. so like he stumbled in. This veto was handed to him. Um, you did. You completed. I mean, he basically, <laughs> uh, Nick's performance, Chris's performance. Um, Mateus is the only person who actually gave him a run for his money. Um, the but, five letter yeah, roast word. <laughs> but it was just pathetic by all other players. I'm sorry, but it's true. Everybody was pretty crappy. Um, but. As, as good as he wanted to be with both the Nick and um, with Chris, I mean, one of them leaving, it just makes the other one need a final two partners. So, mm -hmm. like, he wants to take that role. So, you keep the noms the same, everybody's happy, except for the nominees. Right. And then uh, you just kind of snatch up the other surviving nominees. Yeah, well, I think Tom played it really well, you know, he knew that if he did use the veto, it was going to put him in a pretty compromising position. Someone else that he was probably close to was going to take the place. And so, all in all, he wouldn't have really fixed anything. Do you think that Tom played it pretty well this week, Keith? Yes, but it would have been different. I know you're going to get to this, but like because Marie was expelled, that was their Nick and Chris's plan the whole time. And that's why everybody was comfortable throwing the veto for Nick and Chris to win, because they can use it, try to convince Matisse to nominate Marie for being really inactive. Um, obviously them not knowing, you know, Marie Matus being inside the Outsiders Alliance, but uh, that was Nick and Chris's plan the whole time. I don't know if Tom would have bought into that or if Tom would have used the veto, because Tom and Matus are pretty close, so he would probably do whatever Matus wanted to do, but that's also tricky because they're in a six-person alliance, so had Marie not been expelled prior to the veto ceremony, I would have been very interested to see what Tom would have done. Well, that's, that's one thing I want to talk about, because I feel like that's the next big event, is Marie's expulsion, which... You know, is the most impact she's had in the game thus far. Um, <laughs> and will be. That's coming from Jacob, y'all. <laughs> I haven't even let you start. Um, I said what I didn't say last week. But, <laughs> Very but directly. Let's be hypothetical for a second because I'm interested. Let's see, Keith, let's say you didn't expel, uh, expel Marie. Um, do you think that there was any chance that they could have convinced Matus to put up Marie and send her home instead of one of them? I don't know, maybe, because there could have been enough. I think Matus, because Matus is over the Outsiders Alliance. He never liked Marie. She likes, what, Katy Perry? Yeah. Come on. Shake it off. Shake it off. Uh, so, and Marie's really inactive, and Matus wants to create chaos, and getting rid of an Outsiders Alliance member could be, like, the chaos that he's looking for this week. I don't know, though, because I don't feel like he'd be the type of person to to destroy his own alliance or to attack his own alliance. Like, I feel like there are other people in that alliance that would do that first. I don't see him doing that. I don't think he'd be the one to... I, I'm inclined to think that he probably wouldn't have done it either because it's like you said yourself, he's definitely a proponent of chaos. You know, what's more chaotic? Leave the inactive in. Let's target the people that are playing. Um, and, you know, as long as the Outsiders is a thing, whether he likes it or not, it really wouldn't have made sense for him to take him out. So... I mean, it was a good plan on Nick and Chris's part. Yeah, Obviously, they sure. don't know about the Outsiders Alliance, 
Um, but I think you expelling Marie really did no damage to what was going to happen regardless. Well, it did damage to Nick and Chris's ability to try and persuade Tom to use a veto on them. Mm-hmm. Because that yeah, was the plan. That not... was the plan of the six-person yeah. alliance going into the veto competition. Hey, just throw it into us. The veto picks are great. The only person that's not in our group is Marie. That's picked because she's not even going to show up. So right. this is great. Like, we can use the veto. and But now, since I didn't, and I think this is why Tom didn't want to win, because he didn't want to have to use or not use the veto. Right. Because I expelled Marie, that gave Tom a really easy, okay, I obviously can't use the veto now because we don't have somebody to scapegoat as the mm-hmm. backdoor replacement. Yeah, so... Ultimately, Tom does, I think, the safer option and decides not to use the veto after Marie gets expelled. So it's down to Nick and Chris. And that eviction night uh, got a little vocal. Um, There was definitely a lot of, uh, I guess, open opinions. Feelings. Yeah, (laughs) pressing on each other. We got a long speech from Chris. Uh, Nick openly targeting Matus. What do do you think about this move, Aaron, uh, with Nick you know, not necessarily knowing if he's staying or not. I mean, you have a good idea with Chris. I feel like he should have known that he was yeah. staying. So do you so like I don't this? Think it was, I don't think it was necessary yeah. at all. Because, um, I mean, now he's kind of like at the... I can't, it's going to be really hard to try to mend a bridge with Mateus in, in the future because of because of that. Like, he'll, Mateus will always think, like, no, you're really, you're really coming for... For my head, um, whereas Chris is—I don't even know what Chris was talking about. Like you're—you're you're about to be gone, so I don't know why you're talking for days on end. But um, no, I think Nick should just been like, "I enjoy everybody and I love everything and I love you, Chris, and I just hope <laughs> the best person." You know, he should have just kept it simple. But yeah. Maybe he just wants to be caught in the drama. In, caught up in the Everybody's drama. got in the drama. Yeah, do you think that's going to hurt Nick long term? Or what do you think uh, about Nick for the future now with Chris gone and him making those proclamations, Keith? Oh, the proclamations. I was actually frustrated. Like, that's such a reactionary game to get nominated and then say, oh, I'm gunning for the HOH that nominated yeah. me. I mean, you survived unanimously. Were you ever a target? <laughs> like,. Oh, and you're going to gun for somebody that puts you up to, like, stay in the house? Like, you, you should really evaluate the dynamics of the you house. You should be thanking him. You should really be thanking him. You have no partner to be associated with. Now you now you don't have to even, you don't have to vote him out either. So, like, you should be thanking me, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, honestly. I agree, I agree. It's definitely, it's definitely in Nick's best interest to do everything he can to try and assimilate back into the group. And I think he you know, wants to be on the forefront, almost wants to be a presence in this game, and, you know, that's why he decided to be so vocal. I'm really still excited to see Nick's game in the process, because I really, really liked him from week one. Um, It was nice to kind of see him handle conflict this week, and ultimately being able to survive, good good on him. So, um, I'm really excited uh, to see what happens. We are now in the jury phase, which is great. Um, What do you think about the three pre-jurors, Aaron? Are they three players that you're kind of glad to see get those pre-jury spots? Are are you happy with the nine that we have for the jury phase of the game? I'm just saying, in our uh, week one thread, I said I was looking for pre-jurors, and Marie was number one on my list, and where is she? She ain't in the house. She's not in the house. In the script, Julie. (laughs) All right, well, anything else you guys want to talk about before we wrap this up? Stay basic. Stay basic. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. This is our week two recap. Stay tuned for what happens in week three. It's only going to get more and more basic. (laughs) Bye!